morning everybody how y'all doing pretty good here and welcome to the channel hey the other day we went out and took a ride in the brand new 2020 refreshed Tacoma Sport it was the TRD Sport and I happen to have a 2018 TRD Sport right behind me so I made a little list as I was taking the test drive shooting a video and I thought, you know, when I get home, I want to kind of compare some things I noticed to my 2018 to see what the differences are, to see what they actually look like in real life. And particularly, I'm going to jump into Tacoma back here. We're going to go for a ride because there is one, the more I think about it, profound difference that everybody complains about that I think Toyota has fixed in the 2020 version. So let's jump in, take a ride, and I'll tell you what that is. Okay, we are in the driver's seat, in the cockpit of the fantastic Toyota Tacoma. Now, mine is a 2018. It is the TRD Sport. And the most profound thing, there's actually two things now that I think about it, but the most profound thing that I felt in the 2020 refreshed version of the Tacoma, and I drove both an off-road and a sport, and I noticed it in both, and that is... The transmission lots of people complain about the transmission it's not smooth it can't find its gear you name it I did not notice that in the 2020 version it felt smoother it felt noticeably different now that I'm sitting in my 2018 after driving the 2020 uh, it really is quite apparent to me that Toyota has done something to change or make the transmission better. I, I don't know what they did, but it feels smoother on acceleration. I don't know if the gears maybe run out a little more, but even the shifting feels smoother. You know, as we're driving right now, I can feel the truck going from gear to gear. You can feel just a little hint of a, of a shift. I did not notice that in the 2020, and I did not notice any kind of gear hunting or or hesitation or any kind of a problem with the truck trying to find the gears. I will also say that between the Sport and the off-road, and the off-road is just a little bit heavier, which might make a difference sitting on its own suspension, but it felt smoother to me on the road than the Sport did. The Sport felt more floaty, if you will, if that makes any sense. Like when you're going down the road, kind of floaty a little bit. This one feels that way. I think that's just inherent to the way that the Sport is set up. You know, how it's set up on its suspension, the weight of it, the way it's tuned, all that good stuff that they put into the Sport model. So, to answer the question that everybody asks, and a lot of people ask me to pay particular attention to that, let's put it to rest. I would say that yes, indeed, Toyota did address the transmission complaints that were out there uh, on the Tacoma and it feels I'm not going to say like a completely different truck but it almost feels like a completely different truck in the way that it feels when you drive so kudos to Toyota they seem to have taken care of that issue okay next up and this is probably almost if not as profound of a difference uh, as the transmission is between the 2020 and the 2018, and that is seating position. You know, when I first jumped in the truck, uh, it felt like I needed to put the seat down, like it was just sitting at an awkward angle, kind of strange. Of course, the 2020 has the 10-way power adjustable seat, which I did utilize when I took it uh, on the test drive and I was able to find a position that was comfortable for me. And I gotta say, there is a huge difference. You know, sitting in this position right now, it just feels awkward to me. It doesn't feel comfortable. I can't get comfortable. You know, you can move the seat back and forth. You can, you can lower and raise the back uh, to change your your back angle, I guess, in the way that you sit in the seat. But having that 10-way power adjustable seat is a game changer. 
as far as comfort goes in the Tacoma. It feels now to me, and it's strange because I had actually raised the back, right now it's back in stock, but I had raised the back of the seat, which in essence kind of sat me even higher. Now when I get in the truck, with the back even down, back to stock, I feel like I'm too high. It's a great, great addition, I think, to the 2020 Toyota Tacoma, and it should satisfy anybody's complaints out there about seat position. If you can't find a comfortable seating position in the new 2020 with its power seats, the Tacoma's probably not for you. Okay, next up, and this is probably not a real fair comparison, but to take a look at the interior, the seats, you guys can see the pattern I have right now and they're in the back and of course in the sport that i drove it did have the leather seats um wow again more comfortable better feeling uh i really did like the leather seats uh in the sport that i drove I would highly recommend them, especially if you live in a cold climate. You know, they come, I believe, with uh, heat or heated seats, and uh, they were fantastic. As far as the design pattern, uh, you can see, again, what I have right now. We'll kind of compare that a little bit to what's in the Sport, the cloth seats that are, were in the, or the Sport, the off-road that I drove. There is uh, a bit of a difference there. Uh, so, depends on taste. I, I don't know that the design of the cloth seats and the in the off road uh, did much for me either way. I'm neither here nor there on those, so eh, matter of preference, I guess. Okay, a couple more things on the interior here. Of course, the radio, and this is obviously the radio that I have in uh, in my sport. The radio in the sport that we drove was the. Uh, 8 inch touchscreen with the 360 degree camera. We're going to take a look at that here in just a second, but um, I'm big into tech, so I, I, anything that's bigger is better for me. Uh, I really did like that radio that was in the, uh, the 2020. Let's take a look at the camera. You can see here my reverse uh, view versus what we had. I'll put a picture up right here. That 360 degree camera is pretty cool. Next up, up here on the uh, roof, if you will, or the center console, whatever you want to call this part here, uh, we did have that new OnStar type button here. Um, I'll never use it. Uh, it's there if you want it. If that stuff's important to you, I guess that's a good thing to have. Really kind of looks out of place to me being there. Um, but it'll serve, uh, obviously, a valuable purpose if, uh, indeed, you're ever in a situation where it's an emergency and you need to, to hit that button. Okay, we're outside, obviously, now, so let's take a look at a couple things out here. First of all, the wheels are obviously different on the new Sport. They're supposed to weigh a little bit less. Might be why it kind of feels a little bit more floaty in the front end of the Sport um, than it does in mine, and especially as compared to the off-road. Um, the taillights, let's take a look back here. They are, of course, different. You can see what comes with the 2018. These are the stock taillights. Obviously different than what we have in the 2020. Let's take a look up here in the front at the headlights. Obviously, this is the 2018, and right here are the 2018 or 2020s rather. And while we're up here, take a look at the grill. We still have on the 2018, of course, the chrome surround. Ugh, we don't have that. Thank God they got rid of that on the 2020. I will probably change out the grill on the 2020 anyway, but uh, much, much better than this chrome bezel they have around the 
the 2018, in my opinion. Now, one other thing, and I've had comments both ways on this until uh, I could prove it to myself, and that is the cubby in the back. Does it have a cubby in the back? If you look, the 2018 still has the cubby over here on the driver's side where you can store stuff. On the 2020, that cubby is gone, like you can see right here. So no cubby on the, on the driver's side. Another thing new on the 2020 is the touch entry on the passenger side door. You can see here on the 2018, we don't have those three little lines here, or here, I forget, we'll look at the other side, uh, that you can touch and then gain entry to the vehicle, as long as you have the keys in, their po in your pocket. We did do a little test, Joe and I, while we were looking at the truck to see if while he was standing over on the driver's side, if I touched the handle on the passenger side, would it activate, and it would not. So you do have to be within close proximity for the three lines, which are located here, to work. There you go. You heard it right there. So there you go. There's an example of a few, and I probably missed a couple, of the changes on the 2020 as compared to the 2018 in video so you can actually see them. Uh, is it worth going to the, the 2018 or 2020 rather if you have a 2018 or 17 or even 19? All depends on uh, on what you're looking for and what's important to you people ask me that occasionally and it really does uh, depend on what you're looking for and what's important I mean obviously you're not going to spend the money to get something that doesn't make any difference to you so it's a personal preference for me um, for channel purposes it is worth it because the truck notwithstanding being a manual transmission and an off-road is different enough that it'll have some other things to look at as compared to the current model that I have. If I didn't have a YouTube channel and I had a 2018 or 19, uh, to be honest, I probably wouldn't upgrade um, because I just couldn't justify spending the extra money or taking that hit um, to get the, the few things that there are. But pretty cool if you're new to the, the Tacoma market and you don't have one at all, why not? Opt for the 2020. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of these things. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on the web. Have a great day. Bye.